Welcome literally right back to the <laughs> to Gold Pill. I don't even know what episode we're on. What ep- what would this be? 15, 14? All right, whatever. Welcome literally right back. I'm I we he literally just hit stop recording and then I said, "Do we have any more links?" and he said, "Yeah. Maybe I do this one. Maybe this one goes first." Yeah, cuz it's more more timely with the news. Well, I don't know the Faggotry thing with the Pope's pretty fresh, but that that'll be in the Catholic mind for a while. All right. So Trump got convicted. This is ancient Chinese secret news by now. Is the news cycle so freaking goldfish? It's just constant stream. So Trump, but this is my take, hot take on Trump getting convicted. What is it? 57, 37 felonies? 30 whatever felonies. Because he miscategorized paying off the porn star lady, <laughs> he accidentally re- he actually he mis his he didn't his accountants miscategorized it for ta- for tax purposes. You're supposed to like do a gift or something. I don't know how he did it. Look, my wife. I'm going to quote Trump. I'm going to break my. All right, if if we put this first, by the way, I pledge not to cuss as much in the. Uh, in the first one I, I did. But Trump infamously said, you know, it's crazy. They just let you grab them by the pussy. Okay, that was a hot mic in a in a tour bus with some guy. Got huge press. He made a, the best of it at the debate. But my wife, when she heard that, she wasn't offended. She's like, do you, people just don't know celebrities. And we do. My wife and I know some celebrities. The women, if you get, if you're Donald Trump, they literally would. And that's what my this is my wife saying. She's like, they literally would let you grab them by the pussy. I don't, I, I go, yeah, that is true. She goes, and I heard the tape and it, it's not like he's saying, yeah, I get to grab him. He's literally like, it's crazy, man. Like they just, it's like crazy. They like literally let you grab him. By the pussy, it's great. <laughs> like he says, he's telling this guy who's not that famous, who's a journalist, but nonetheless, but like isn't as famous as him. He's like, it's crazy, dude. Like they just like throw. What he's locker room talking insofar as they say it's like they throw them themselves at me. It's crazy, man. Like okay, that's obviously a step further than they throw themselves at me. But okay, so Trump, he's a psycho, no doubt. Everyone's like, he's a psycho, evil Hitler guy. I'm just like, he's psycho. He just ha- I'm kind of Machiavellian with it. Like, he might, He's our psycho. Okay? He's our guy. Uh, I knew he was a psychopath, for sure, when he went on that. He, went, he did like a roundtable, kind of like fireside chat with some, I think it was f- like some evangelical group or something. Or maybe it was... Uh, and I think he reiterated it on um, Stephen Colbert. Where st- someone asked him, he's like, have you ever apologized for anything in your life? And he's like, I haven't had to. And it was like a, it was like a, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, ugh, that insufferable nerd guy out of Franklin who forget his name but he's like he's like one of those never trumper guys who's always so, every take he has is so nuanced david french Ugh. like i don't like to cast well i do but i try not to cast whatever a spurt what is it called yeah that phrase i don't i try not to throw darts at people i've never met in real life but i can tell you this much that guy i might be able to have some decent combo with him dude Everything is so nuanced. There's so much tension with that, you know, between this position and that. But no, there's not. Sometimes you just got to call it out for what it is. Stop beating around the bush. Now, I will say, I've met, I've got a, a friend of mine, good dude, like not a rad trad, but he's like a pretty trad guy, does not like Donald Trump, like hates him. Fine. His reason is because he's a psycho who's not Catholic, who's been divorced, who's gaudy, all that. And on principle, he's just like, I actually don't really like the guy at all. 
And I'm like, that's fair. He's like, I just don't even think I can vote for him. I'm like, that's fine. I understand that. Uh, but I think he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he's a psycho who's hilarious, who's going to actually get stuff done. Uh, he didn't build the wall or, put, or lock her up and look where he is now. Because Okay, back to the Trump conviction. This is what happened. He, chan- he had everyone chanting, lock her up. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. All that. All right. He gets in an office and faces the, the, the swamp. I'll use this term. And realizes it, he's not the king. And it's really hard to actually get this stuff done. You, you can stroke so many executive orders before the Supreme Court steps in. But he never locked her up. Here's the deal. That, a lot of that was political theater. He donated to her. There's pictures of them like hugging each other. It's theater. And, and that's why Hillary Clinton knows that. That's why she, she knows it's theater, but she's not as savage and psycho, frankly. Now, I know they probably kill a lot of people. And if that's true, she's obviously much more psycho. But take it at face, blue-pilled value. Hillary Clinton's just an opportunistic pantsuit-wearing feminist who didn't leave her husband, not because of religious reasons or whatever, just because she knew that this was her path. You can't leave the president, you know, for being a slick willy. Okay. What are you going to do? Leave the president? Yeah, she might be diking. I don't know what she's up to. But like I know that she's an archetype of a woman. She's your she's your average woman on next door, the next door app. Like she is that. Okay? She went to like Wellesley or whatever it's called, some feminist college, Swarthmore, some shit. Okay. So as Donald Trump's just roasting her on stage, it's like cuz you'd be like, "Well, I'm sure you know, I do you want someone like Donald Trump having, uh, you know, the power of the law? And he's like, yeah, because you'd be you'd be in jail. Greatest comeback. Everyone laughed. The whole world was watching. It was like even the libs were probably like, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, because if Hillary Clinton had said that, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. Donald would be in jail. That's a pretty good one. That's a flex. <laughs> So, anyway, I'm not, look, Hillary Clinton's obviously an evil woman, but I don't, but like, I mean, and yeah, maybe she's had, she's probably, maybe, okay, she's a psycho too. I'm just going to say, I'm not, I'm acting like David French right now. I'm like, no, well, Hillary Clinton's nuanced. She's not really, she's a psycho evil person. All right. She's a psycho straight up Hillary Clinton. But Donald Trump's obviously a psycho, too. And people who don't realize that, I don't know why you don't realize that. It's okay to say he's a psycho. You know who else is a psycho? Elon Musk. Jeff Bezos. These, like, top dog alpha guys are psychotic. And I literally mean that. Like, they have less empathy for people. That's that The hallmark of psychopathy is a... Is a marked decrease in empathy for people. Now, Elon Musk, he's it's because he has an IQ of like 160 and he's on the spectrum. Now, I think Elon Musk does care about people and I think Donald Trump cares about people. I don't mean that they're like psycho serial killers. Maybe Hillary Clinton is actually, but not serial killer, but a serial mm, uh, cooperator, let's say. Facilitator of some weird things. <laughs> Spirit cooker. How about that? Uh, but I read this really great book by this Jew, written by a Jew named uh, John Ronson, and it's called The Psychopath Test. And it's basically talking about psychopathy. And it's a pop psychology book. It's a quick read. It's very fun. Most of his books are really well written. They're, they're fun to read. But um, basically he talks about how like people who are at the top generally display traits of psychopathy. They can't afford to care too much about other people. (laughs) They can't afford to care too much about their like kids baseball game. Right. They can't. They they want they have one goal in mind and that's to drive. That's why some of these bishops are some complete psychos because they've just like stayed in the lines. They've worked the system hard and they've been promoted. Okay, some of them are, are don't really care, but that's with anybody. That's callousness with anybody, but these top people. So Donald Trump's a psycho. He's also kind of sleazy. Duh. He he married a Romanian model who is pretty. And like, yeah, they're the based first family and all that. But at the end of the day, he's kind of a psychopath. 
So he's going to be paid. He, he, he has all this smoke. Like, he's got a lot of things he's got to work through. Paying off strippers. Freaking, you know. Obama, like, yeah, he gave money. to He, like, dropped off $2 billion cash to Iran or whatever. Like, literally dropped it out of a C-10 airplane. Like a, a car, like it, it's floating down with those green, those green uh, parachutes. And okay, and he did Operation Fast and Furious, where he's like giving the cartel, the cartels guns and all that, and you know war crimes, yada yada yada. You break eggs, you do. You break eggs when you're the president of the United States. And Obama, you know, he's just kind of he's like your NPC community organizer guy. Bottom line, he's got a soft, soothing voice. And he's kind of psycho too, duh. You know, with her, with her, his husband Michael uh, Obama. But Trump is obviously going to get himself into some sh- stuff. He can't help it. He can't stop talking. Kind of like me. I'm getting myself into stuff probably down the line with this show. I don't really care. It's kind of psycho that I'm doing this. That's okay. For free. I'm not even getting paid for this. You're welcome. Um, so Trump gets convicted. This is a long way of saying Trump gets convicted. The first time a, a pre- an ex-president has been convicted of a felony. And even my dad, who's a centrist guy, doesn't. he's like old stock Republican. Okay, He read through it all the news and he goes, this is total bullshit. It is a witch hunt. And I'm like, yeah, it's a witch hunt. Here's the thing about the Democrats that they don't understand because it's largely DEI ladies in the think tank stuff. Of course, you got George Soros pulling strings and all that. But I'm talking about like in pre- Did you see the judges? They're all these like black ladies up in New York. OK. I'm sure that there are. Some, look, my uh, we've got a friend, smart black lady. Uh, they're smart black people. Duh. But that many judges in one location. Like, New York's pretty big. Like, I don't It's weird, okay? And they're obviously spiteful and da-da-da. So it's a witch hunt. He gets convicted. The thing that they don't understand is, is this makes him so much cooler. Like, black Twitter, the day he got convicted, was so off the wall. It was going insane. I almost said it was going ape shit. I'm going to be real. And I, I, it was going ape shit. Like it, it literally was like, not literally it's figuratively was going ape shit. The, uh, they're like, that's my nigga. He's the realest nigga around. I mean, Andrew Tate, who I don't like, he's kind of got a weird face and I don't know. He's, what is he like Lebanese or something? I don't know what he is. And he's like, I guess like the most bad, He's like a, what Dan Bilzerian, that really Jack guy, like couldn't do. But if he could, he would. So it's just this like gr- uh, grind culture. So like he's on Twitter saying like Donald Trump is a real nigger. Like he's my real, he's my nigger. That's what he's saying on Twitter. Black, t- the, the Hodge twins who are this like conservative twin, black twins, they commented under that. And I saw them comment. I'm like, oh, what is he? And they said hard R's for Trump. The Hodge twins said hard R's for Trump. Okay, if that tells you anything, that's what's happening. He dr- Donald Trump is a rapper who can't rap. He rides around in a 767 with his name in gold leaf on the plane. I think he has a gold toilet in one of his properties. He is a Persian. He's a rapper Persian guy. Okay? He's nouveau riche. He's the 80s. That's why people love him because it's just like enough of the bullshit. We're done. We just want to have fun. We want to stop having to worry about correcting ourselves. <laughs> hard, hard, hard R's for Trump. So I, I quoted it correctly. Hard R's for Trump. That's their actual Twitter. Hodge twins. Hard R's for Trump. And then that's a very funny photo of black Trump. Orange is the new black. Look. 
I think the tide's turning where people are like, I was talking, look, I was talking about, uh, the word nigger with somebody else. And I think I talked about this on the show. Look, it's the Yahweh of our civic religion. It's a super rude word. If I was black, I wouldn't want to be called that, nor am I going to call a black person that, especially their face. Like what? Like that's the only way I can conceivably really like dig into that word in my mind is like an active, like descriptor of somebody is if I was like being kidnapped by black guys. Like I'm in the trunk tied up. It, like they've got me in the trunk and the, the subwoofers next to my head, like just rattling my skull. I mean, I might sit there and conceivably yell it if they hadn't taped my mouth. I'd be like, let me out, you mother. Like I, but you know what? In the, in the modern world, that would be the worst offense. Say what? Yeah, that. In fact, that would mean I would deserve to be. It's just a. What other word do you have, Thomas Soul? What other word do you have for the black redneck? Because redneck's the last racial epithet. I. I'm being serious. What? That's redneck is the last acceptable racial epithet you can use against a people. No one blinks an eye. Yeah, that guy's kind of a redneck. Can you imagine? Redneck. Why? Because we get sunburnt. Like, yeah, that guy's kind of a wetback. You'd get crew. I think it was Eisenhower who had Operation Wetback, and it was about like Mexico or something. There was some CIA thing literally called operation wetback um if you said wetback if you called someone a wetback they'd be offended they'd be like hey it's your problem man you know da-da-da. if someone called me a redneck i'd just be like no i'm not what are you talking about like i am rubber you are glue whatever you says say bounces off of me and sticks to you in fact i think the hallmark of our of the effeminacy of our time is that everyone's getting so offended by these words. And I don't mean like everyone's so offended now. It's just like, you can't do anything anymore. No, people get offended because they should be about certain things, but what we should be offended by is blaspheming or oppressing the poor or withholding the wages from the worker or sodomy. We should be offended. Our sensibilities should be offended by normal, natural things that are, that are in accordance with the natural law or in violation of the natural law and in violation of God's law. That's what we should be offended by. Every time says someone says, look, I don't even want to say this. Like the things have reversed. Like I'll say all these other words, but now I don't. But when someone's like, oh my, oh my G-O-D, I'll spell it. Oh my G word. <laughs> I cringe. I kind of, I kind of go, mm. A little bit, like I just go. Mm. Someone's like J C. I'm like, yo, dude. Especially if it's a believer, because like they know not what they do a lot of the times. They're not, you know, unbelievers. But uh, I'm, I'll be like, hey, you need to stop saying that, dude. <laughs> like you might go to hell, <laughs> and you deserve it. I mean, we need to stop saying that. He's. The God man we all worship, right? I don't understand. I don't worship black people. Sorry. So I'm not like scared of the rude. Obviously, I'm not going to use the rude words. Uh, but like what, we should be way more sensitive and scared and offended by uh, by blasphemy. That's why like it's like cancel culture. Yeah, I don't care. Cancel away. But we're canceling about the wrong things. Everyone's always canceled. I posted on my Instagram the other day of Colin Lewis. The no, What's his name? He's a comedian, boomer comedian. And he's like, look, the Catholic Church was uh, HR for the whole world for like 600 years. Okay. They, now, they didn't really police themselves, but that's a whole nother matter. Ooh, I know edgy. I'm, I'm, I'm insulting the church in 2024. Okay. Um, but uh, now we have Karens. All right. And, and what's even worse is... The whole world is HR because we have all these phones and cameras. 
But uh, even the people who get the videos of these Karens are Karens themselves. Because if you're capturing the Karen and policing the Karen, what are you? You know, you're, you're, you're a meta Karen. So the whole world went from the Catholic Church to Karens. What would you like? I know what I would like. I'd like to feel a little, like, oppressed by not being able to cuss or whatever. Then have to worry about all of this bullshit, just to speak frankly. I'd rather be under the thumb of the of the dicastery for the faith than I would have to deal with. I mean, I was just at lunch, and we were saying, this is in Nashville, by the way. Nashville is center left. And, like, the people here who are liberal and, like, left-wing, they're terrified. They think that the right-wing death squad's right around the corner and that, like, because they, they, they literally think that, and good, keep thinking that. It keeps you from putting too many pride flags out or whatever. They think the, like, le- like right-wing death squad's coming for them. Like, at any given time, some band of hicks, some band of rednecks, let's say, from the outer counties just going to roll in with their big trucks just like rolling the coal with their huge American flags and like lighting their house on fire. And that's what they think is right around the corner. They're not entirely wrong, but that would be a civil war moment. Nah, you don't have to worry about that right now. But they, that's what they think. And they police themselves accordingly because they're scared. And so the whole thing is like we police ourselves because we're scared of getting fired. We're scared of... Uh, say like the Japanese have a great phrase they don't they don't have many great phrases but they've got some good they've got this good phrase you can't save your ass and your face at the same time can't save face can't save ass normally now if you're running away from 9-11 you might be able to save if you're not in the, well if you're a fireman running away you might have say lost your face lost face but you saved your ass. But if you're like, like one of those guys, kind of chubby guys wearing uh, suits and you're covered in soot, you're running away from 9-11, you saved your face and your ass at the same time. There's rare exceptions to this, but you can rarely save face and save your ass at the same time. And part of saving your ass is living in accordance with church teaching. Now, of course, it's not church teaching to go run around calling people names, by the way. It's uncharitable. Sorry, it's not like there's that great meme. I'll never not reference it where it's a guy in hell going, but I was based, but I was based. Okay, based is is the word cool now. Okay, being cool is like heroin chic, right? Being cool is like Lou Reed and uh, the Velvet Underground and Andy Warhol. Like that whole notion of like, man, that's cool, dude. That's super cool. Now, cool means good anyway, but I mean, like the genesis of that shit is like, uh, Louis Armstrong smoking weed, like smoking like the most mid weed ever. Okay, in like the back of a kitchen of the club he used to play in, he was playing in, and was like, "That's cool. I want to be like that." Based isn't a, a based isn't necessarily charitable, and that's the one thing I kind of want to drive home is that we have, you know, Chesterton says. The only thing worse than the than the weakening of major morals in the in the modern era is the strengthening of minor morals. So someone can blaspheme the name of the literal creator of the universe, who co- came to save us from unending death, who we're supposed to be loving and adoring. Um. But we're not. We're, we can't say all these other things. It's weird. It's weird to me. It's backwardsville. Like, that's not to say, like, we should be saying the things at people and being very uncharitable or whatever. But this whole, like, it, it, that's the real mind break there. And if you, When you're coming out of this kind of, if you are used to be blue-pilled and you're coming out of this kind of, you know, uh, gay race communism mindset, then, yeah, that's what one of the things you're going to have to do is just realize that the big things, that the, the big deals of the world aren't that big of deals. Um, you know, I've been around enough, like, super rich people to know, like, at the end of the day, that's fleeting. I, my wife and I watched Wife Swap, um, like, the first season of this reality show called Wife Swap, where a wife will go live, the, 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 the families will switch wives. And, and, and in the beginning, 
the first for two weeks in the first week the wives have to like abide by the rules of the family that they're in it's very disordered i think it's jewish but it's very disordered um but nonetheless it's a it's it's funny so in the first season on the I think it was the first episode this very rich new york family who lives in manhattan they have like four maids you know that keep up with their kids and au pairs and nannies and da 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 and this was, I think it came out in like 1999 or maybe, you know, early 2000s. And then it was like a New Jersey family that like lived on a farm and like had kind of a hard scrabble life. Like, you know, they chopped wood for a living and like sold firewood and like farmed. And, and so the like rich lady comes to the farm and she won't do anything. It's classic. She's like just classic, uh, Chester and quote like feminism is the understanding is the muddled idea that women are free when they serve their employers but slaves when they help their husbands well she didn't work anyway but like she sure isn't gonna serve her husband much less some random husband which is actually kind of ordered in a w weird way now that I say that she's like I'm not doing any and I'm not chopping wood dude I'm gonna sit here and talk to my friends uh or talk to these people these women that are coming to my house but the lady the the hard the farmer lady went to Manhattan and she like abided by the rules, so she like went out and got her makeup done and sh shopping spree and da 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 da, while the nannies took care of the kids. In the second week of the show, the wives implement their family's rules into the new family, and the husband has to follow those, those like what they do. So she dismissed all the nannies, and the dad had to come home from work or like at six instead of going like at eight and da da da. And the dad was dying. He's like, this is terrible. Like, da, da, da. And she's like, your kids don't ever see you guys, you know. And, like, we're going to have a home-cooked meal. When was the last time you did that? With no nannies around. And he's like, never, you know. Da, da, da. No, he's, she's like, okay. And I'm watching the, the rich man who's so arrogant. And the, the, the farmer man, the, the poorer man, he was, he was too harsh. And you can tell he's too harsh with his wife. And so they both learned, like, well, the farmer learned that he needs to be more grateful for his wife. The only reason I'm saying all this, this might bore you, but the only reason I'm saying all this is because I'm watching the rich people on here, and their their uh, their stuff looks so dated now. Like their apartment looks dated. the The limo they were driving in is like a white limo. Like it's 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 gauche. It's it's not on trend anymore and i'm watching i'm thinking memento mori vanity of vanities like the rich of 2002 when you replay it and watch it which is what's going to happen at the particular judgment like it's not that cool like it's not that cool to be so like to it, it's not the end all be all like the only things that have stood the test of time as far as like rich people stuff is like the Biltmore in in uh North Carolina like who was the least wealthy of the Vanderbilt children which is funny built the biggest private home in the country uh like the Medici palaces and stuff you know like some of that stuff's like kind of timeless but for like the average like striver who's right trying to be cool and goop and have your you know, bespoke, whatever, you know, your custom wellness program thing. I don't know. It's just going to seem so boomery, if you will, down the line. Because the couple that I watched were more Gen X. There was Gen X couples. But it's going to seem like outdated and just stupid and what? You strove for that, but you're dead now. That's why I love reading Preparation for Death by St. Alphonsus Liguori. You read that, and, and one of the first like sermons in it is talking about a prince uh, who, or a king who was ill, and the fa and he brought his prince in. He was the d king of all, and it was like a true story. Was, and he was sick, and he had a he had an abscess on his stomach that was eating away at his probably cancer, eating away like his stomach was open, like you could see his flesh and like his innards. He was rotting. And, he's, and he brought his son in, who was the prince, who was very, like, about town, most handsome guy, you know, probably bathed three times a year instead of once, uh, you know, could eat whatever he wanted, blah, blah, blah. 
and he comes in and he brings him in and the, and the, and the father's dying and he pulls back the cover and the bandage and he says look I'm rotting I'm dying all of the things I have all of the temporal power I have doesn't matter it doesn't matter and I think that's important so I don't know how what this has to do with Trump but uh, you know Trump's going to have some reckoning when he dies straight up that's why we shouldn't be like I mean, it's fun to like post about Trump and I'm glad I'm, I'm excited that he's that he's like arrested and he's cool now and all that. Like he's a felon. He's a gangster or whatever. But at the end of the day, like keep that in mind. If you want to get like if you're like, man, I just watch too much news or I'm on the phone too much or I'm I'm mean to people or I'm lazy or dude, read Preparation for Death by St. Alphonsus Liguori. It will blow your mind. You'll be like, oh, my gosh. I've been focusing on all the wrong things, if that makes sense. It'll scare you straight, especially if you're gay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what's the next clip? Do we have, what, are, what else do we have? Yeah, speaking of uh, demon conspiracies, what, what, what we're, we're about to show you is what I'm talking about. I'm so grateful this is happening. They're all young. They're like flying the flag. Guys, this is awesome. What a time to be alive. Can you imagine being a medieval, like, peasant and reading about, like, all the tribulations of the early church and being like, gosh, that was so heroic. You know, now I got me wife, me mead, me oxen, you know, paying the Lord his taxes and giving him some barley, whatever. Gosh, that's why the Crusades were popping off, too. Like, people were like, yeah, I'll go fight some Muslims. <laughs> this is awesome. I'll get martyred. Sure. Dude, what a time to be alive. I'll never forget. This is, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years now. Not this show, but, like, living living uh, as a Catholic. What are you laughing at? No, I haven't been doing this show 10 years, but I've been, I've been a Catholic for 10 years. And I've always been a confrontational kind of outward Catholic. And I'll never forget when I think it was my first year in, there was a protest outside of Planned Parenthood, or a rosary, a vigil outside of Planned Parenthood during the day or afternoon. And I went and it was me and probably like 30 other people. And uh, there was a priest here, who I won't name, who was there. There were a few priests uh, but one and one of which, it, and I, I walk up, man, I was still kind of like one foot in this kind of like hipster, secular, like, you know, alt kind of world and one foot in the Catholic church. I mean, I was still Catholic. Like I was going to mass, going to confession and all that. But like, I still fully hadn't like died to my old self, not in a culty way, but like, and I still have those proclivities, like these alt hipster proclivities. And I still very much like a lot of the old people I used to hang out with and some who I still do. And the, you know, the artistic sensibilities and the aesthetics and all that. I get it. I like it. Okay. But I was, I really cared about my optics with those people still. Right. Like I, I, I cared about being cool. So I remember going, it was my first, my first vigil ever. And I show up and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is like a public act, you know, of like anti-abortion and I was thinking this is pretty hard like heavy duty you know I, gosh what if people see me or whatever 
So I go and I sh I'm there and uh, these people drove by yelling like that. A couple people drove by yelling like that. Most people, some people honk and wave, but one like slowed down and was like, "F you, da da da." And this priest was like, "Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee." And as they're doing that, he just blesses them. Drive by, reverse drive by blessing. They drove by, they got blessed. Reverse drive by blessing. I remember being like, yo, this guy does not care at all. He's dead to the world in a profound way. And that right there, you have the opportunity now to be dead to the world in a profound way in the face of like active aggression, especially in a place like New York City. I mean, they're going to go bonkers up there. You had a, if you had a, whatever uh, i don't know if our bishop would ever do this but it'd be awesome if we could have you know what it's pride month isn't it dude i'm gonna organize just a rosary where the pride parade is like outside of the pride festival okay i just thought of it let's just do that i don't know if anyone's gonna do that in nashville I already did it for a, every day, every Saturday outside of the freaking transgender clinic for kids. Who cares? I had no one yelling at me, but they might yell at me. I don't really care. I can riff. I don't mind getting yelled at. I've gotten yelled at a lot in my life. It doesn't like hurt my feelings if people are like fascist. Da, da, da. I remember never forget one time I went. It was uh, when Trump was president and there was a May Day antifa rally downtown nashville and i went and i had a a burzum t-shirt on and a camo make america great again hat and uh i was upstairs if you listen to the old show you've heard this but i went up to this like observation tower in the downtown park near a courthouse as i saw all the antifa up there and there were probably like 50 of them and i walk up and my Make America Great Again hat is camo. Like, it's camo pattern, and the, the lettering is black. So it's kind of, you'd have to be close to know that it's that. It's not the red one. So I'm up there, and they're all talking, and they're like, yeah, he's fat. I heard there's some fascists coming. And I was like, where? <laughs> where at? What kind? <laughs> are we talking clerical? Are we talking Franco? Are we talking, what are we talking? You know, I was, I'm kidding, but not really, but, uh, I prefer monarchy to any fascism. I think fascism would actually be kind of. I think like I mean, I look. I love Franco. It's Franco Friday kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. It would be kind of base to live under Franco's deal, where it's just like, yeah, I'm not doing that, you know. But I think after a while, which is why I think France or uh, Spain flipped when he died, and they and the king abdicated, or like gave over his absolute his monarchical powers to their to their uh, Congress. Made it like, you know, basically a head of state kind of thing, like a, the Brits. They probably kind of got tired of it a little bit, you know. You know, you get once you have a leader for like 40 years, unless you're like a, the Chinese or something where you got 300 last names and you're not necessarily like a red-blooded people like that, like kind of rowdy, like the Spaniards. Um, anyway, anyway, so I'm sitting up there in the, on the observation deck and uh, – they're like, yeah, I mean, but we got lawyers. Y'all get arrested, we got lawyers. Like lit, literal boomer level George Soros talk. And I literally was like, oh, maybe your QAnon uncle might not be. T this is before QAnon, but or I guess, but I don't remember. But maybe your QAnon uncle is not exactly, you know, it's the globalists. Okay, I don't give a shit who it is. They were talking about it, having lawyers. These are ragtag, Spencer's gift-looking-ass people, okay? No C College of Art, not dissing if you're actually a good artist. I'm just saying, like, deviant art, furry, dorks. These people are dorks. There weren't, like, Chad-fed bodybuilders up there, right? In fact, I was looking for, like, jacked guys. Hello, my fellow Antifa, you know? <laughs> Hello, my fellow comrade. Anyway, get up there. Oh, shit. I kicked it with my foot. Um, 
and this group is sitting there and they're like, yeah, da, da, da. And, then, and then the conversation trails and I've got my arms on the, like on the edge. And I'm just like gazing down and I turn, and I go a nice day for some freedom, isn't it? And they look and they notice my hat and they're like, uh, yeah. Uh, and then they start whispering among themselves. I'm not kidding. There were probably 30, maybe 40 people. I don't know. But I literally was not scared they were going to, like, kill me or something. I mean, I'm a pretty big dude. And at that moment, I was ready to throw down. But these guys are such dorks. They're such dorks. So I show up. And I do that. What were we talking about for the Antifa thing? Do you remember? Trump? Were we? What was I talking about? Dude, I lose my train of thought all the time. Oh, I'm talking about being bold, like like this, like the abortion stuff. Dude, these guys are dorks. This isn't like the cigarette smoking Spanish left, where they're like they they whipped up a bunch of farmers to like communism, you know, like hey, you know, some some feet, you know, academic came home from summer break and is like, Papa, I must tell you. The man at the bank, he take all our money, and there's a better way. And then the next thing you know, you're, they're at the, like, you know how they do in Spain where they've got, like, the Brazilian-style barbecue shit? They've got some, like, pig open, like, in a, on a pit of flamenco music. And they're like, and everybody, listen, we don't have to live like this. You want your money? You want what your labor earn? Don't you? And they're like, yeah. Dude, a lot of the, the, the left-wing Spaniards were like farmers who would kick your ass. Not anymore. Have you met? The left-wing farmers now are hippies who don't kick ass. They live in, like, Vermont, okay? And they have, like, thruples while, and wear, like, Echo sweatshirts, so uh, hoodies with, like, dirty shoes and, like, kind of clean the chicken pin every now and then we don't have like brawlers on the left anymore but i ran in i tell that story because i ran into a dude who was filming the antifa thing once they lined up and you had all these like q and not like ta- that uh, you know during jan six like the viking guy and the lectern guy and like a lot of those people were just like rowdy kind of crazy like, you got to be kind of crazy to go into the Capitol building. <laughs> like, but they noticed they didn't, like, turn. They took the lectern, but they, like, minded the red ropes. They, like, respected the place, right? So you had a bunch of these types. Like, one guy had, like, a Keck flag, like a like a Pepe flag. But he was wearing, like, a an uwu kind of weeaboo, like, anime hat thing. And I'm like, this is dysgenic on both sides. Like, dorks all around. So I'm walking through and they're yelling at each other. And there's like a line of cops, like it's the civil rights era, like just separating the two groups. There are probably like a hundred, probably 200 people total, 300 people. And uh, this guy was walking through, who I won't name, but he had, you know, very tatted up, had gauges in his ear. And I knew this guy very well from an, like another like aspect of my life. And, you know, we'd had some deep conversations and da, da, da. And he's, he's got a very nice camera and he's filming the, the, on behalf of like the Antifa thing, I believe. And certainly on behalf of the, uh, but anyway, and I ran into him and I saw him and he's like, what? And I'm like, Hey man. And he sees my hat and he's like, how's it going? And I'm like, pretty good. How are you doing? He's like, I'm just filming. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? He's like, yeah, it's pretty crazy, pretty wild, kind of cool. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool, kind of dorky, though. And he's like, yeah, I guess so, a little bit. Anyway, uh, see you around. And I was like, all right, man, see ya. And he overdosed and died uh, last year. RIP, for real. Like, it's sad. But, like, I don't know. I, I don't care anymore. Like I want my old friends to convert and all that, 
but I'm, I've always been rowdy. Even when I was more left wing and like doing drugs, I was always rowdy. I'd talk rowdy about whatever left wing position I thought was true or whatever. I'd, I'd poke the bear and all my old friends got mad when I'd switch sides. Cause now I'm like bringing it to them, but it doesn't matter. Look, you're going to lose friends. If everyone likes you, there's a problem. My wife, perfect example of this. I don't like her half the time. Okay. Just saying when you live with somebody else, especially two people who are imagine me, but a woman, that's how my wife is. Okay. She, she's just uh, says what she wants to say and da da da. So, but my wife is my mom, my wife's mom always told her, and it's true. Like people are going to love you or hate you like her personality type and people either love my wife or hate my wife. Okay. That's true. And generally the same with me. Now I'm a little bit more, uh, uh, discerning when I'm, when I'm talking to like men mix company and stuff like that. My wife will literally just go in and say whatever to anyone. And then I've got to like clean it up or defend whatever it is. Uh, she's more, she's more brash than I am, which is funny. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but people aren't going to like you if you're Catholic now. I got I went tomato mode in my old barber. And th- they made fun of Catholics. They were kind of making fun of my kids. And where's the time? Oh, there it is. They made I'm sorry. They made fun of my kids and I went tomato mode in the chair with my th- my apron on, like yelling at them. I'm like this is why we're going to outbreed you. You know, I was just like basically like you guys don't have any kids. Say what? They were like, I, I was sitting there getting my hair cut. And, you know, you're in enemy terror as a, as a faithful Catholic. I don't care if you're in the suburbs, conservative suburbs, or in the liberal city. Or you're out in the middle of the country. It doesn't really matter. Because there's going to be third rail issues or issues that, like, conser- I always joke. Like, my wife sometimes is like, why don't we just move to the suburbs? It's more MAGA. And, like, you know, da, da, da. People, we're not going to deal with a bunch of this craziness. I'm like, yeah, but when I'm at the cookout and I tell people that vasectomies are degenerate, or gay people are not gonna are gonna be like oh what and if i talk about usury and like capitalism not being exactly christian all the time they're gonna be like what but if i make a fag joke or something they might laugh or whatever but same thing in the city okay if i make a fag joke i might get kicked out of the party my wife will make those jokes at like a liberal party which we don't really get invited to anymore which is fine but um but if i start talking about user and capitalism they're like yeah cool but i'm like yeah sodomy is also a sin that cries out to heaven for vengeance not only with withholding the wages of the work defrauding the way well, the worker of their wages and oppressing the poor but sodomy is in there too they're like what that's not my thing what are you talking about you know so wherever you are as a practicing catholic unless you're in a catholic place with a lot of more catholics around you like saint mary's kansas i guess i don't know uh, you're going to be in enemy territory, okay, in your workplace, in your, uh, and I mean enemy. I don't mean friend. I mean enemy, like like people who are not willing the same good that you want, that you think should be willed. And certainly they may not be actively harming you, but they will oppose you if push comes to shove at the end of the day. And so it's helpful to think of people as friends and enemies. There's acquaintances as well who you don't really know, but there's friends and enemies and at the end of the day enemies are going to not are are going to be diametrically opposed to some aspect of the faith and if it's pushed and if the push comes to shove on it they're always going to sh- they're going to shove they're going to shove back so that it's important to note that not because it's like it is very black and white and it's it's binary which some people have problems with now but it's helpful categorization for who you should be praying for and who you should be charitable towards so, um, yeah, it's a great time to be alive. I'm so excited to live in this time. Like every other week, there's something so exciting happening. You know, Trump getting convicted first time ever in American history that a president gets convicted of a crime. You got literal like no one would have batted an eye in the 50s if you were praying outside of an abortion clinic, if they even had those. I don't even know. Like they'd be like, yeah, that's pretty bad. I don't agree that Catholic, I think you guys aren't Christians or whatever, but yeah, we should, that should probably stop. I think, I don't know. I don't really know. But now you've got active, you have these, you have these people who will come out of the woodwork and just scream at you 
And the best part of it is you are literally told you're going to be blessed because of it. Like, blessed are they when they persecute you and utter falsities towards you and all that. Like, you're literally blessed when people get pissed at your charitable display of the truth, even if it's forceful, okay? Now, I'm not, you know, this isn't Catholic answers. We're going to talk like dudes talk, okay, on on this show. But at the end of the day, interpersonally, you got to be charitable to people and, like, get to know them. That's why, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, there's my mortal enemy, the guy with the camera. I'm going to be like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Like, I know the guy. Obviously, he's my enemy insofar as he's diametrically opposed to my faith. But that doesn't mean I can't be friendly to him. You can be based and friendly. That's the biggest issue I have is all the based. The basis now is it's not just that it's like too like, oh, mean tweets. Trump's mean. I don't mean it like that. I mean that people are just like, nope. Not going to talk to that guy or like that. And what ends up happening is they don't talk to anybody. Nashville used to be, I went on a walk on the, uh, I went on a walk yesterday to go to the grocery store. It took me an hour and 30 minutes to do it, do the round trip. I'm trying to beat my brother with my Apple watch, uh, fitness stats. But, um, I went and it was, le- it was leisurely, but back in the day, Nashville used to be like, Hey, how's it going? People walking by just like, Hey, what's up? Or like, hello. Hi. Now with all these transplants and now how insulated everybody is, I literally was saying hello to everybody I passed by. And people were like, uh, there's like, uh, hi. at best, one old lady who was walking her dog was like, hi, how are you? I'm like, I'm doing good. Kind of sweaty. You know, these aren't exactly walking clothes. I mean, technically they are any clothes you're walking in are, but you know, they're not athleisure. Let's just say that I looked like I do now, but I was sweating through my little, it's, it's humid here. It's a jungle in Nashville. Anyway, um, what a time to be alive. Be grateful. You can get that grace and that blessing. Like, there, uh, that was the whole joke about the peasants in medieval times. They didn't have the persecution. Now we do. That's awesome. Let's rock. All right, what's the next clip? Dude, how did I go another hour? I told you I had a lot to talk about. How did I go another hour? What time is it? I mean, we can go another hour. You want to just end it and do another episode? Keep it an hour? You got time for that? Okay, let's do that. 